<laughs> uh, yeah, so there's definitely something funky. It might be actual sugar. No. No? It's not. Rub your teeth together. Is it like soy milk? No. No, that's not soy milk. That I think they might have used like Brevia or something like that. What is Brevia? That's that uh that's that art it's the, the artificial sweetener that's made from sugar. Kind of like the way they make uh non alcoholic beer. Oh. Okay. I've never had it. Yeah, this doesn't have the, the trademark characteristic aftertaste of either the pink or the blue stuff. No, it's definitely the creamer. Well, it might be the creamer too, man. It doesn't taste bad, at least not to me. Yeah, okay. It's just different. <clears throat> All right. It's just different. Jeff and I are debating the uh, how they jacked up our coffee at Dutch Brothers. I don't find it jacked up. I think oh, okay. I think it's... I think it's fine, Your Majesty. I mean... Oh, well... I disapprove. <laughs> Clearly. I'll be okay. Then. Why don't you go ahead and introduce the show, jerk? I'm Pat. <laughs> Apparently I'm a jerk. <laughs> I'm Jeffrey, and Pat's a jerk. Um, let's go ahead and get a start as jerk. Um, I don't know. What are we going to talk about? This is not the way to start out. So... <laughs> um... <laughs> You're not supposed to fish topics in the <laughs> So I punt as soon as they get the ball, huh? Yeah. Oh my god. I don't know, man. Well what the fuck is going on in the world? I don't even know. I don't I haven't like there was a shooting yesterday, right? Where do you want to start? Where where where, where do you want to leave off and, and move forward when it comes to current events? Uh, with current events? All right. Well, I've only got a couple things that I want to talk about tonight, so we might as well do current events. Well, okay. So if you have a current event that you want to talk about, that's fine. Or I can run you through. Uh... All right. Run me through. Okay. So the only thing that I really know about is the shooting in Chicago, which is done by some white kid. Mm, but maybe... Oh, I thought he was Jewish. Uh, they haven't been talking about it, is part well, of the issue. Yeah, see, I assumed, like, um, it's that thing where, like, with school shootings now and stuff, you're not supposed to say the name of the perpetrator if they know who it is to glorify the the act, but they do anyway. It comes out. So. Yeah. Um. Did they catch him yet? Oh, yeah. They caught oh, okay, him. they did catch him. Yeah, I caught him. <laughs> Later that evening, I think. This is just yesterday, right? Uh, oh no, this was six. So it would have been uh, Monday, yeah. the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so that happened. Um, I I don't really have any insight on that one. All right, so I would say, well, what's our last concluding uh, current event? So is this everything that happened post? Uh, Supreme Court revelations. Yeah, we did talk about Roe a little bit, so that would have been I think the that last. would have been last, so it's like catching yeah. up since then. Yeah. So, all right. So you mentioned the, the fourth shooting, of course. There was uh, more shootings in Philadelphia. There was... Oh, were there? Yeah. Like what kind? Uh... Like gang stuff or like, that's what it seems to be. Yeah, but that's normal in Philadelphia. Well, right? but it was kind of like at a mass gathering also as well. Oh, okay. Um, there was the Akron, Ohio. Oh yeah, what was that one again? That was. The... Oh yeah, they shot the guy wearing the ski mask. Yes, the guy that that fired that squeezed off some shots at the cops first. Did he? Yeah. But he didn't have a gun when he ran, or did he? No. Okay. So, he was by his car, fired two shots at the cops, uh -huh. right? And uh, I guess left his wedding ring and <laughs> the gun in the car seat, in the passenger seat, right? That's, Took off. Yeah. And then when they were catching up to him, he went for his waist, and they just gunned him down. Yeah. Which I have no problem with whatsoever. 
Oh. If they're shooting at you, if he shot at you first. Yeah, that sounds very similar to the one that we actually had here. So, several years ago. Remember when the kid ran away and then he turned around? He was reaching for his, his waistband and the cop shot him. Yeah, well, did he already fire at the cops? I think, well, the one here was a little bit different. They said that there was a guy with a gun and they gave a very specific description. And then it turned out it was that guy. Um, and the witness originally was maybe mistaken that there was i don't remember the whole thing there's been so fucking many of them so yeah i mean that's i mean know. i think that's your point i think that is the point is this is right starting to it's starting to just sort of like vanish into the ether at this point because it's it's not well like there's 10 of them a year okay mm -hmm. where it's like cops versus unarmed guys but and, and yeah. they, they murder the, the guys, all right? Um, and so of those, like, well, maybe it's more than that. But what was it? Who? So one of the podcasts I was listening to, they, they, were, they were laying this out the other day. So there's, like, maybe, like, 25 of them a year. Ten of them involve unarmed black men. And so of those, it's guaranteed that, like, all ten of them will actually be publicized. Whereas, if you're of any others, particularly if you're of Hispanic descent, zero of them get publicized. Um, and so, it seems like there's a lot more, just because every single one that, you know, comes up that fits kind of this profile yeah. gets publicized. And it's happened enough now, and we've been paying attention to it enough since at least, what, Trayvon Martin? Um, which oh, was boy. 10 um, fucking years ago? um that you know now if there's like i mean unless unless it turns into like george floyd and you burn down fucking half your town or ferguson you know it, it pops up like this it's there in the news for a couple of, like the one that happened here was after both was after both george floyd and ferguson and it was after oh it was george after both floyd? of those no not george floyd i'm thinking of uh the first one that's right yeah yeah, yeah. So it was after both of those, and then there was another one in there with the guy who was running away and then turned and charged the cops. So there was like two or three big ones that had happened before the one happened here. And then it happened here. It was all over the fucking local news. It was over the national news for like a day and a half. And then it was done so. So, you know, uh, there were a couple of protests downtown. They were really small and peaceful, you know. Um, and it was kind of one that we want accountability from the police department. The police were like, okay. So, you know what, CBI is going to investigate it, so it's out of our hands, you know, and they did all the things, and then after a little while, I was like, yeah, actually, this one's kind of shitty, so, but that same point in time, the guy, the, the cop, he followed his training on it, you know. Now, the one that was interesting about Akron was how much ammo... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like ninety shots. Yeah, but think like about that. it. That's 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 so. If there's five cops tra chasing you, okay, you know, and we're carrying well, like ninety shots. So yeah, it, they would all have to empty a clip onto you, you know, to get up around there because it's like probably fourteen rounds per clip or something for cops. Um, it's more than you can get at Walmart <laughs> in most places. <laughs> at most, but. Uh... I hate to correct you because I've been corrected. On oh, what? Evidently, you're not supposed to call those a clip. They're oh, a it's magazine. a magazine. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Who corrected you on that? Oh boy. I, I think I think it was that fucking pocket Constitution metal uh, metal Constitution dweeb that I used to work oh, with up in the oil rig. No, no, no. This is back when I worked at the bank. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he was Mister. Oh, I have to surrender these whenever I get on a plane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, one of those yeah. guys. Yeah. yeah. I think he's the one that's like sovereign adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I think that's that's right. He he had like early stage on early stage. So <laughs> stage one. Yeah. Stage one sovereignty. Stage one sovereign <laughs> sovereignty. Yeah. <laughs> So it's still localized, sir. We can cut it out. We can operate. Yeah. 
<laughs> if we if we check it under the scope and we got all the edges, you're not gonna have to do any key. Oh yeah, dude, you know? I, I have seen people where sovereign citizenship has metastasized to the liver. It is done. You're done, way. man. Yeah, you're, you're done. done. Yeah, you have it. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, you have it. Um, yeah, but I think he's the one. The only like, cure for this is secession. <laughs> <laughs> middle of the country dude we're <laughs> like what do we do for water transport no i got you but uh i think that was the dweeb that that says like well actually it's a magazine yeah i've heard that too so you know come get, 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 get the fuck off of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> There's other examples of this where where I've been corrected on things that like they're clearly this and everybody knows it is this. But they just have to interject and say, like, actually that's a trebuchet. Or no, okay, uh, well, yeah. no, those are those are their own thing. But right. yeah, yeah, like obscure military unit references notwithstanding. There are certain things that I, I'm sorry, just none of them come to immediate mind. I, I but there feel, are. I some feel like things, I've been corrected yeah. on the dumbest shit like this, yeah. but I, it doesn't come to mind because I disregard those people immediately. Well, yeah, or at least what they have to say at that point in time. Um, I, yeah, sorry, no, 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 uh, no immediate references come to mind. If it comes to mind, yeah. please do because I just, I know I've been I've been assaulted by this, mm -hmm. but I just can't. Yeah, I got nothing at the moment. I just wash it immediately. It's like, oh, no, yeah. that's fine. Because now I have you pegged as that person. Well, and it usually is that person who's, like, way into, like, guns or Nazi uniforms or something. You know? Um, yeah. Those guys. Well, yeah, and then, like, there's sports guys <laughs> who do that, too. So... We we actually had an example oh, on the show a couple weeks ago where it's what okay, the championship, yeah, yeah the, the Stanley Cup final final. There we yeah. go. There you go. There's yeah. a good example. There. Yeah. So yeah, even though it's several games, it's still the final. Right. And, yeah. And and it, so I I said that was where the 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 grammar portion came in where. Uh, like I was saying, like like if the if the truncation is basically like from final games, mm -hmm. and you truncate it to finals, it's because of like final games, right. right? You're eliminating that second word, but it's still a plural thing, right? right? Where the Stanley Cup final, mm -hmm. right? If they are just referring to the entire series as one incident, yeah, I mean, but. This is not common English, man. So, I, I know. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I can see the justification for it. It's just, it's so fucking petty that you know it's kind of like it it gets you labeled as one of those guys. If you're using it for anything other than an obscure piece of trivia to impress dumb women, then you're you're We're just stupid friends. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to be your friends for much longer. Yeah. Then, then, yeah, that's 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 all you need. But yeah. So we had the the multiple shootings, um, and the the interesting thing about that the ninety shots. Okay. What this does for me more so than anything else is this should be the thing that ends people from ever saying again. Why don't they just shoot them in the leg? You know, I haven't heard of that one as much as I used to. So, um, like, George Floyd and stuff, that one was completely different. But the one before that right. where the guy was running, I heard that one a lot. And I haven't heard that one as much as since then. I think it just got to the point in time it's like, no, everybody's trained to hit center mass. Oh, you know which one it was? It was the one where the lady accidentally pulled her gun when she meant to pull her taser. So, oh yeah, that entire Whoa. that entire That's argument kind of went away at that point in time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, she plugged that guy. She did, and like legit felt bad about it. 
<laughs> well, what? I, I, did you ever, did you ever watch the footage of it? The, like, yeah, the it's pretty footage? fucking heartbreaking. Where, well, from her perspective, I know what she was meaning to do. Yeah, but if you just watch that with just the volume off, you're like, oh, she just killed this dude in cold blood. Right. Because yeah. When you listen you to just, the volume, and you got to play the like the next four minutes after that. You know, to get the context on it. Because it looks like she just, like, casually pulls it from her pocket <laughs> and just blows this guy away. Like, it's absolutely dirty Harry's in Exactly. <laughs> like, they grew up in the same neighborhood. And, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, that guy yeah. owed her brother $500 or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. So, I mean, the whole discussion about policing has just been completely derailed since George Floyd. So, What do you do? I don't know anymore, man. Well, I mean, we had like that. we had like two, three months there where we probably could have talked about it rationally. So and what then happened? the the whole thing what went did we do? fucking Twitter crazy, and you know now we're gonna tear down all the statues and defund all the police, and you know which is exactly the opposite of what just about every one of those communities wanted you to do, or needed you um, to do, or needed you to do. Yeah. Um. You know, and that whole narrative got buried in all the shitstorm that was going on after that. Oh. Um, but, I mean, fundamentally, it's still like, all right, there is a problem with policing in the United States. It's really straightforward. Cops are afraid of the neighborhoods that they police. Okay? Yeah. It wasn't that way 50 years ago. All right? Mm -hmm. And so, fundamentally, something's fucking changed. You know, the idea that there's actually neighborhoods or even, like, buildings, you know, like, Kevin used to talk about this even in New Orleans, like, 20 years ago. You know, that there are buildings where the cops say, well, we'll go in there, but you need to let us know before we, we go in. Yeah. You know, because yeah. we got to bring some dudes. And now, like, I mean, there was a book that I read a little while ago. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was on Eric Gardner's killing. Yeah. Um, And kind of, like, all the fucked up things that were going on in the Manhattan DA's office at the time. And how the NYPD... Um, just based upon this metric, how they, you know, they had to have contacts and things like that. So anyway, it really, like, distorted the system. But what happened was that it was just a lot easier for the cops to actually go around and just harass people on the streets than actually go into some of these pride, the PJs that really needed some help, you know. And so after a little bit of time, <laughs> they wouldn't go in them anymore. Oh, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, you're like, man, we don't own that anymore, man. <laughs> You know, and so it's just like really messed up, kind of like the, the way the incentives kind of jacked a lot of things up. That, um, you know, it really turned into something that got people away from what policing used to be a long time ago. I don't know. I don't know that much about it. Every cop that I try and talk about it is so fucking salty that, you know, um, you know, it's like, man, some of you guys just need fucking quit. All right. So I get it. Just cash them out. Get them done. You know, things like that. You, you, you know, you're ruined. So, I mean, like, I would never go back to being a sky cat. It's ruined for me. <laughs> you know, I think there's some cops cool. that fit that category. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, it's just like, it'll never be the same, man. <laughs> I'll never get up in the morning and look forward to going to work again, you know? <laughs> and then, I mean, a lot of it, a lot of the rest of it is just like... Like, I've heard so many dumb solutions, like, well, every cop should be trained in, like, six months of fucking jujitsu. I was like, what the fuck administration is going to pay for that? All right? So you're going to take that down to the, you know, the, the local, uh, the local, uh, uh, chain, or I mean the city council and say, hey, we want to pull every cop off the street for six months of training? Okay, well, we can rotate it out. It's like, that's six fucking months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's six months. I know, and so it's like, all right, so that's a stupid solution, you know, so obviously lethal force is still going to be a part of policing regardless, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, so... Well, because, okay, so the, the, other, the other problem with this is if you were to <clears throat> say that the purpose of this is to uh, train all of your officers to be martial arts proficient yes and to essentially encourage them to use this to solve their problems right what that means is you have to fire every female patrolman in the business yeah you have to because you cannot hold them to the same standard 
Okay. Well, and they currently don't, you know. No, they don't, but at yeah. least with a pistol, okay. Yeah, or any form of, like, non-lethal force. I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm sure that there's, like... All right, so think about it, like, in some respects. Like, what's the up-down odds on you actually confronting somebody who, if I was a trained female in jujitsu, I mean, how much bigger than me would he have to be before it became a problem? And say, like, on average, the, the average dude on the street's not going to know half as much about jujitsu as I do. Oh, uh, do you guys weigh the same? Sure. Okay, he wins. Really? Even if I'm trained? Yep. You think so, man? 100%. I don't know, man. 100%. Why are you so 100% on that? What, what kind of, kind of, like, like what, what, kind, what kind of experience or kind of, like, just, like, what's pushing you to be so certain about that because i mean if a woman weighed as much as me and she was trained in jujitsu she'd whoop my ass so you said the average guy <laughs> okay so you're saying below average beta <laughs> i'm saying that your aggression levels are below average very much so i am saying that <clears throat> um you, you don't play any sports or anything like that. No, so, no, no, I, I mean, so, 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 you know, I, I'm just going to put it to you that way. But when when it comes down to it, right. But am I below average? Like, literally, if you took everybody who's 44, like, do you think that I'm in the 35th percentile in terms of, like, physical activity and body mass? Well, oh, it, it... how many fist fights have you been in your life? Like, four. All of them before high school. Okay. Yeah. So, well, since, yeah, since high school. <clears throat> so. All right. So I'm going to say that the average man has been in a fist fight or some kind of fight, right? Past that age. I uh, think so. Some kind of altercation. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. An actual fist fight? No. Yeah. No, okay. Not. Like, one-on-one -on -one combat, not just punching in some dude's hood. No, well, it, <laughs> it's stuff that, that didn't escalate to that. So basically, mm -hmm. like, it came down to tussling um, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Or if you consider, like, sports or stuff yeah. like that. Um, but I'm just saying that, that if it comes down to... So, average man, average woman, if they're the same way, man wins every time. Even if the woman is trained... When you come to the... What is the training going to do for you? Well, I mean, honestly, I don't know. Because I don't know anything about jujitsu. So, I don't know anything about any martial arts, man. Okay, so... That's what, why I'm a gun guy. <laughs> that's the, the whole point I'm making here is... Alright, so... what? Is, so, you don't know anything about jujitsu. You don't know what it's about. I don't, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about MMA. I, yeah. Okay, well, it's... So... It's about... So, jujitsu specifically is about... Uh, it's about grappling and holds, essentially, leverage, right? Right. Submission. Basically understanding the joints, how to go <clears throat> ahead and, and use these things, right? Yeah. The fact of the matter is, most of this stuff only works when you're at somebody's equal or more so, or you're either stronger or equal strength to the yeah. other purpose, Right. Because ultimately, like, if you're a woman and you're going to armbar me, okay, mm -hmm. your body torque has to basically be able to extend my arm like this, mm -hmm. okay, without me being able to pull it back. Okay. Okay? You have to outmuscle me in that regard, okay? And the actual strength difference between a man and a woman of the same weight mm -hmm. is immensely different. Yeah, no, I get that. So, but like, I, I mean, I. So, jujitsu isn't going to help them. I thought it was supposed to, like, you're supposed to choke the dude out. So. Yeah, well, yeah, but again, if. In order to. How does choking a person out? So, if you basically get your arm underneath here, cook it like this. Yeah. Okay. All right. That works, A, if you can catch me so completely off guard. Yeah. Right. Um. Like, you'd have to be, like, a trained fucking, like, Soviet ninja. Okay. Okay. But if we're in a in a tussle, you're, there's no way you're going to just get behind me, throw that rear naked choke on me, mm -hmm. right? 
Because all I have to do at that point is I have to be strong enough to get my chin down. Yeah, okay. Okay? Because that's the... Would that be your natural reaction in a situation even if you had zero training? Tough, Paul. The, yeah, okay. The, the argument I could make here is that um, there's a there's a better chance that the average male is at least versed with uh, even like the, the watching the sport yeah. to know to do that. Yeah, maybe. Uh, now, that's not me saying that because you've watched Rocky, you're a boxer. That's not yeah, true. Uh, yeah. Right? So, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that point. But at the same point in time, I mean, like, so then there's, like, virtually no reason to have any kind of martial arts training as a cop. And you should just go right for your weapons. So... Well, if you're a, if you're a, if you're a guy, then I say yes. Why? Well, well, I mean, it wouldn't matter then. I mean, because quite honestly, if I'm going to have female officers on my force, which I'm going to have. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm going to give everybody at least one or two forms of non-lethal weapon. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm going to tell everybody, use fucking these. Okay. So I don't want half my police force unable to actually do something. So yeah, but <clears throat> yeah, but there there is a a part to this where you've seen this where they have to subdue a suspect down to the ground, mm -hmm. right? They're not being compliant, mm -hmm. right? Um, Just taste the bejesus out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I like yeah, I, but... like I don't know. See, this is why policing is so. It's it's something. It's it's like. This is why cops don't want to talk about it. It's why people in the community don't want to talk about it. All right, it's because, like, nobody knows who to believe on what about certain things. Nobody, like, really, you know, understands individual motives that are involved in it and things like that. And, yeah. and it involves all these issues with gender and race and all this shit. And so it's just it's just an absolute fucking hairball of a topic. Um, and quite honestly, I think people are just fucking sick of it, man. You know? And so this whole thing in Akron, a day, okay. Um, well, it didn't turn out to be like an unprovoked, like shooting. It's sure. it this guy opened fire on the cops. Well, Absolutely. Yeah. It's pretty right. straightforward. Um, so. and again, they, they tried to make it a race thing with this lunatic and fucking They're going to try Chicago. and do that every time. Well, where they're like, well, why did they bring that dude in alive? It's like, well, cause the dude surrendered. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah, this one was kind of weird. He actually left the gun there. So... Yeah, exactly. That's fucking weird, man, because in, like, most of the mass shootings, it's, like, basically a fucking kamikaze mission. But he oh, actually no, 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 no. I'm not talking about the, the, the dude left his gun uh, in Akron. Oh. The guy... Yeah, that's weird, too, man. Yeah, the yeah. guy in... Uh, the guy in Chicago, he's the one where they caught him dressed up as a woman... Because he was trying to escape. That's why... He... See, that's so fucking weird, man. With almost yeah. all the mass shootings. Like, you remember the one in Dallas where the guy basically barricaded himself? Oh, yeah. So, and they had to use that fucking robot to go get him? So... Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's like almost all your mass shootings are kamikaze runs. And this one, as soon as I saw it, he's like, well, you abandoned this weapon and you guys are looking for him. Wow, that's fucking different. And he dressed so... up as a woman and he, he tried to... Uh... <laughs> he tried to cheese it, huh? <laughs> he tried to cheese it, but when they, they caught him, he surrendered. Yeah, yeah. And so. it's like, well, so here's the thing. They're going to bring you in alive every time that you surrender. If you surrender, yeah, you're coming in alive. Yeah. Well, eh, George Floyd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that dude yeah. was resisting the whole time. I, I suppose, that dude, man. No, that yeah. dude was resisting the whole time. The issue is whether... It... It, well, except for when he was unconscious. So, <laughs> yeah. I know, but that's the whole point. That's when you get the. That's when you that, get off the motherfucker. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand, but you're talking about what could have circumvented this. It's like, it's just get out of the car. You get out of the car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's true in all cases, man. So if yes. you comply, they're not going to shoot you. So, except for that dude in Arizona, that was, that one was terrifying. What happened? The, do you remember this one? This one was the. Uh, this was this was a white guy. He was the uh, he was the insect exterminator. So somebody had seen him. He was in a hotel. Somebody had seen him with a uh, 
it was basically like an exterminator's like kit. And one of the things looked like a gun. So they call the cops on it, mm -hmm. right? And so these two cops show up and this fucking lunatic is just screaming orders at this guy, right? The, the, the cop? Yeah. So the cop is the lunatic. Yeah. Okay. He's just right, got screaming it. orders at this dude. And uh, he's just raising the tension because the guy is, he's got like his hands up and he's, and, and so he's reacting. He's like, just, fucking God, crawl to me. Right. And he's just doing this. This, this guy is completely nervous. Right. And at one point he moves in a way that like contradicts the way that, that the cop asked him to move. They pull him away. I don't remember that one. They didn't politicize it. It was terrifying. Yeah. But it's... It, How long ago was that? About five years. Oh, okay. Yeah, about yeah. five years. Um, yeah, it, it's... Yeah, I don't remember that one. Yeah, that was the, 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 the... I remember there was something weird about... The cop had something weird written on his weapon. <laughs> was it a Punisher mask? <laughs> no, no, no. Look, I, I got you there, but it was actually, it was like a, it was like a phrase. I can't remember on there, but oh, it was, yeah. uh, <laughs> there's fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't Check know. out this cool lightning bolt I drew yeah, on there. I drew two of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, that's just the outside outline. Right, yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh well. Well, and this is this is again this is where the the this is where I have a problem with the whole like, all right, well then you should even when the, the, the male cops, right? Mm -hmm. Even when they have like training, because you you are supposed to get physical, that's part of the job, right? But you have to in order to get through academy. In most jurisdictions. It just depends on like how broke the jurisdiction is yeah i know yeah and there's because, always yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of places where man you're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to getting police recruits so which is weird because not really man so like you think about it like some of those places where you worked up there man so you got a county that's only got about four or five thousand people in it you need two three hundred police sheriffs to actually patrol that bitch they have to live local, so you know, and stuff like that. And then you're surrounded by guys who make two hundred thousand dollars a year, and you're gonna make thirty five. Fuck that shit. So, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, there's gonna be something probably a little off from with you. Either you're gonna be loyal to the community, you're gonna be loyal to what? Oh no. Oh, I'm sorry. No, so, I just thought a little bug. Oh, okay. It's not you. Um, you know, or something like that, or maybe you can't get on with some of those places, but. You know, I mean, it's going to be tough going, so, you know, to recruit. I mean, we have that here. So, we have yeah. that here. Yeah. So, like, just about anybody who gets on with the sheriff's office, if they can stick with it for, like, three or four years, they can jump over to the to the, to the, 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 the city police right. and make almost triple. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, um, because... We have city property taxes. <laughs> so this is the you know? okay. So and we we decided as a city that we want to fund our police department. <laughs> so and not rely upon the teat of the the state in Denver to actually you know try and match some of our funds. Yeah, yeah. The I've read a fairly uh, to me at this point convincing argument that they've said that um, things started falling apart basically during and post-Vietnam. And you've probably read this too, right? Why is that? Well, so the argument that they've had at this before was that prior to this point, the police and the military were, were very much seen as two distinctly different units, right? Yeah. And after Vietnam, a lot of guys, uh, they got out. These are military trained guys and police agencies. Uh, they found a lot of benefit in hiring ex-military guys. Yeah, sure. Right. And what ended up happening was 
a lot of military attitudes started making their way into the police, right? So whereas the police beforehand, right, and this of course just it 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 doesn't completely account for a change of culture. Yeah. But it could also be that this is partially responsible for that was the idea before was your local cops were your local cops. Yeah. They knew you, right? Yeah, yeah. They were in the neighborhoods. They 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 knew your names, right? Yeah. Whereas it eventually became militarized and on top of that um a lot of their equipment became ex-military equipment because yeah. of the wholesale deals that they would get. Yeah. Right. So it turned into kind of like an aggressive yeah. military police force. Whereas before it was a we gotta talk this out first. Yeah, no, I've okay, so I've heard that argument as well. Yeah. All right. So um the, the refinement of that argument that I've heard is that, okay, yeah, some of that may have existed after Vietnam, all right? So, but the problem fundamentally, like, with Vietnam was that anybody who went to Vietnam served in the military, is usually one and done, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. The real problem, all right, with the police force starts about 2008 to 2010, okay? When just about everybody who's now done two tours in the sandbox right. comes home and gets signed up there. And on top of that, the DOD starts turning around and selling its used equipment yeah. to fucking police departments. So, and I would agree with that, all right? Because I remember cops in the 90s. I remember some cops in the late 80s, okay? We had one who lived on the street right up there, all right? Nice guy. Had his cruiser parked in his driveway every fucking day, all right? So <clears throat> he didn't have, he had a service revolver. <laughs> right. Right. okay right and then i remember all the guys at the airport the only guy who was even remotely militarized was the guy with the canine dog yeah so yeah george he was the only guy he wore jumpsuit every day all right so i don't know if that was part of the deal if that was just a cool thing to do if you're a canine guy i have no idea but i remember even some of the cops out there still had revolvers yep. <laughs> I remember when you would never find a cop car in this town with a shotgun strapped between the two, the, the two front street seats. And I think the first time and the only time I ever heard of, like, the, the SWAT force getting called out here, you know, when we were younger. Shit, there was, I remember there was one time where there was a bank robbery downtown. So and it was all over the fucking news and shit. And we had, like, a SWAT van. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. So, yeah. yeah. And then, so there's only been a few instances of that, but, like, since since Iraq in particular, um, I don't think you're going to find a police cruiser in this town that doesn't have an AR-15 in it somewhere, full auto, ready to rock, whenever you go. I don't think you're going to find too many cops who don't wear a vest. So, in fact, I, I don't, it's, I mean, I guarantee you some of the guys at the airport never wore a vest. <laughs> They don't make them that big. <laughs> no, no. It, 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 yeah, it, it's like, well, it's like, this would protect me from getting shot. But then again, I also have the special order. You know, we got to so. stitch two of these together. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it was, it was a completely different time, man. And so, and I remember even talking to some of the, the mm -hmm. like, I got to know some of the guys at the airport fairly well, you know? And so like, they had a lieutenant down there who was old school. Um, like, and he had been, he was a Vietnam vet. And things like that. And he was definitely that old school kind of beat cop. Where, like, yeah. Yeah. Fletch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Keep he your was... nose clean, son. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So he just cruised around, man. He just do his rounds every single fucking day. And that was, that was a completely different mentality than what I've seen from a lot of cops since then. Especially those who had a little bit of tour time. Now, interesting, though, I mean, my wife is good friends with a cop who wasn't in the military before 9-11. Um, he was actually an Oklahoma City guy. He responded to that. All right. Wow. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, and he's got a very different mentality than some of the other guys that I've met, um, you know, in terms of that. So, he's very chill, very good on the community outreach and you know, making sure that they're in the right areas and getting to know the right yeah. people in the community and stuff like that. But he's just like, I ain't got the budget to do it, man. He's like, you got to understand. So I can't patrol this much of this town, all right, on foot, all right, with what I got. And so you stay in your motherfucking car. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll get you get to know the guys at the Dutch Brothers. <laughs> or something, a couple stops that you make. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, well, and, and that's that's part of it. So there's, there's a couple of... of 
the things here that you mentioned, number one is <laughs> in order to maintain that, you'd have to have uh, basically proportional growth according to the growth of the locations, right? Yeah. Of the population. That's not happening. The other thing is this is really a chicken and egg situation, right? Because the, the question is whether the brinksmanship happened because of the militarization of the police mm -hmm. or that happened as a response to uh, changing forces within society, I would argue... See, here's my thing, is how can we go from a situation where, take it all the way back, um, it's, it's pretty clear that... that Things were never as deadly as they were during, like, the Prohibition years, right? Yeah, but I don't know how much that is hype, so... Well, of course. Yeah, no, I don't, and, I don't and, really and, know the stats. And, and part of that is they, they still um, present it that way, sort of like stories of the Old West, right? Which was not half as lethal as people think it Of was. course yeah, not. Yeah. No, but <laughs> in terms now, of... Now, in certain places it was, but... <laughs> oh, absolutely, right? Um, but it's a question... That's sort of a chicken and egg thing, is... Yeah. Um, did basically did did basically the 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 change in attitude towards the cops happen because the cops militarized? Yeah. Or did they militarize because of the change in attitude? I don't. Think. Well, I, okay, I I'll, I'd actually make an argument for the latter on that one. Probably. So I mean, you know, given in a situation where you're basically forced to make do with resources that you got. You're going to find the ways to optimize the situation. If that means you don't go into the PJs, it means you don't go into fucking PJs. Go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, unless you bring in a lot of guys. <laughs> Lots of lights and siren, man. You know, I mean, so, but, you know, the other thing about it is, like, escalation and laws and, you know, like, the whole gunny sacking thing that district attorneys do. Yeah. Um, you know, like, underfunding of your PD's office. There's all kinds of different things. That point to that that are on the law enforcement side as reactions to what's going on in those communities. Right. right. Um, the thing that I think is stupid about the entire argument, and it frustrates me to no end, is that all right, we can have all those discussions. Let's talk about easing up some of these laws. Maybe you have a woke DA who's not gonna charge people for this shit. Right. All right, because we don't have the resources to actually sit down there and fucking, you know, dot at every I and cross every T and fix every broken window. Fine. Yeah. All right. But we're not going to do that unless we talk about what the fuck is going on in this community. All right. What, what, what What's the deal? Like 85% of you are high every fucking day. Like we need to talk about this too. <laughs> you know, because really when it comes down to it, like if you have a community that has no, like, if it has no like soul to it, other than the fact that it's the hood. All right, that like remember everything that was a hood was at one point in time a really good working class neighborhood. One hundred percent. Yeah, yes. like you drive in some of the shittier parts of town, not so much here, but definitely down in Pueblo, and there's a few spots in Denver that are shitty, shitty parts of town where you don't want to be. All right, at certain times of day, they are filled with beautiful homes that have Tiffany glass windows in them because back in the like twenties and thirties, this was a working class neighborhood. Yep. You know, and so you can turn that into some bigger, like, discussion about, like, oh, well, fuck, you know, the plant closed down, and yada, yada, yeah, I get it, all right, so what are we going to do about that, you know, kind of thing, but, you know, at the same point in time, it's like, man, you know, like, this is, this is a multi-directional problem, all right, and so just pushing one narrative just doesn't change anything, and that's why... Like you and I won't be talking about Akron next week, so <laughs> no, and that's that's part of it is so one of the biggest issues I have with essentially this country, okay, is paying for a lot of therapy, but they're not. <laughs> but they're, well, we are, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but the problem is there's a big segment of the population that is absolutely refusing to be honest with the doctors right and you cannot get better unless you admit that you have these problems yeah right yeah, yeah number one you cannot look at certain things and say oh well this is a cultural thing well if you say that yeah if you say that you can say so but you also need to take accountability and say like it may be but it's unacceptable by any other standard yeah, yeah, yeah. right because it's like, all right, um, obviously there are certain things where I, I simply don't care. It's like, if they want to greatly relax, uh, like, uh, 
you know, enforcement of like, like drugs and stuff, I don't care. It makes no difference to me. Right. Um, but there are certain things where, where, where you have to look at, at community numbers and say, you guys need to change your attitudes towards whether or not it's okay to be in prison or not. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause it's not like we can actually make it any worse for y'all. So no. yeah. Prison's pretty horrifying. Um, there's this one YouTube channel I got hooked on, man. It is, it is fucking terrifying. So it's guys who come out of prison and this guy mm. interviews them and asks them about their stories. And you do not want to go to fucking prison. In this oh, country. I don't. No, you don't. I will do anything. I will spend any amount of money it takes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I will I'll mortgage everything I have yeah. for the best lawyer I can. If that yeah, person could yeah. possibly keep me out. Yeah. So, you know. But yeah, I mean, there's a piece of it that's like that, and then there's another piece of it that's just like, you know, or just not willing to look at base facts on these things. So if you take a look at like your your cities with the highest, and just to dive headfirst into the race issue here on this one, the it's fucking cities, the cities that have the worst, worst neighborhoods in them are predominantly black, all right? And if you can go in there and you take a look at like other cities that are much, much larger and have lower homicides rate, they're predominantly Hispanic. So you go to L.A., L.A.'s murder rates aren't near as bad as fucking Chicago. So no. <laughs> it's, it's a Hispanic no. city. So, yeah, well, it's kind of mixed, all yeah. right? But if you go down to San Diego, fine. Go over to Miami, yeah, it's a little rough, but eh. You know? <laughs> so, you know, like, as long as you don't get involved with the cartels and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. you settle your shit with knives, not with guns. You know, you go to Cleveland, you settle shit with guns, you know, or St. Louis, which is basically an American wasteland now. So, which is heartbreaking because, you know, it's like this, I mean, like gem of the industrial Midwest. So that I went to many times as a kid and now I fly around it. <laughs> what do you say? The gangs have anti-aircraft? I don't know. They might. They might have stingers. You never know. <laughs> So, but, and that's just one of those things. Oh, like, all right, so, yeah. it's, well, DC's not as bad. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's rough. Yeah, I get that, but DC's got its own problems that are a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I, I could go off on DC a little bit. So, go off on DC? No, I don't really not care. Do to, no, not like go off, like, rant kind of thing, but, like, the fact that, like, Okay, so you're talking about one of America's what like like top twenty five cities yeah. out there it doesn't even have representation in Congress, doesn't get access to half the goods and services that other state governments would be able to provide. It's kind of bullshit. So the fact that like it has to actually endure an entire new regime change every four years and every four to eight years, and then everybody in who gets in there tries to beat on it a little bit more, that city needs some fucking stability, man. And so um, that's all I'm. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I don't think we need a 51st state, but oh I mean, hell no, it needs to be fucking left alone. So every party that comes into power in D.C. like they'll try and put the boots to the D.C. mayor in one way or another, you know, and it's just fucking stupid. But anyway, now um, there is there. It doesn't even have territory status like Puerto Rico, man. It's weird. <laughs> no, because it is its own unique thing. Right. Yeah. It is a district. And you know what? That's one of those weird things where I try to explain that to people who <laughs> have moved here. Right, yeah. Right? And they're like, so what is this? I'm like, it's a thing. It's a, it's a city. Yeah. It's also not a city. Right. It's not a state. No. It's, no county. It, yeah. It's also not a city. It, this is not Singapore. Yeah. Or Monaco. No. No. Yeah. It's Washington, D.C. Yeah, and it, it has no representation. Like you just it's have crazy. to accept it as its own state of math. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because then, then you're like, um, it, it's almost like, it, it's 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 sort of part of that big cluster with there and Baltimore and stuff like that, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's weird. It's, yeah, it's... I, I had someone explain that to me a while ago, and I was like, oh, man, that fucking sucks. I'd never live there, man. So, you know... Um, because all your depend all, like if you want anything fucking done, you gotta go up the hill. It's terrible. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. <laughs> and so like the entire fight that's going on in the entire nation affects your goddamn city. So whereas like here, it'd be like well, vote the guy out. <laughs> you know? So yeah. Yeah. You know, if we don't like the mayor, we will shit can him real fast. You right. know? So 
No, it's completely messed up, but um yeah, that's it's it's a it's a different that's the, yeah, Baltimore's yeah, that, that whole corridor right there, Baltimore, Philadelphia, PC, DC, um Camden. Camden's supposed to be like one of the worst places in the United States. So um, you know, just absolute rank, stupid ass poverty. And like one guy that I listen to on this, and I kind of respect his opinion. He's just, he's like, you gotta fucking move. Eventually, you just gotta realize it ain't gonna happen here. You gotta fucking pack up and go, you know? So, you know, it's just, and I get it. And he's always like, you know, I get it. It's your mama lives here. I get it that, you know, this is your family home and stuff like that, you know. But if there's, if you live in a community where you have a 90% probability of having one or two outcomes, Either you're going to be dead or you're going to prison, you know, that's, that's not a place you need to be. And so, no, you, you have to, you have to change your odds. Yes. You have to change the denominator, man. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I, I yeah. So it's, it, it blows, but it's just, it's like, man, I see people do this in bubble all the time. You know, all Pueblo bred, born and raised native and stuff like that. I'm like, man, motherfucker, if you left this town, you'd probably make about triple what you make. You know? And then, I don't know, fucking remit it back home or something. I'm like, you know, like dollars from Sri Lanka or something. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I no, so, no, no, but, you know, good. at the same point in time, I mean, like, you know, it's just like th this dream <laughs> that you have of, like, the Ford plant reopening again. It's just not going to happen, bro. And so... The way you're talking about this too, it's, you're making it sound like it's like turn of the century shit, but it's domestic. You're like, I send a half of my paycheck home to my mother in right, yeah. Detroit. In Detroit, you know, yeah, my, you know, like it's across the Atlantic, right? Yeah, no, 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 no. It's uh, <clears throat> you're absolutely right because there's there's two things with this that I think would be beneficial with this. Number one is reinforcing the idea that you can change your circumstances. Sure. Okay. Number two, actually breaking up certain cohorts and introducing, actually spreading diversity into different areas instead of saying like, well, this is just our crowd, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or, or, but see, that's a natural side effect of people leaving those situations. All yeah. right. So you see it going on in Detroit right now. Mm. Detroit's not as fucking bad as it was five years ago. And that's because a shitload of people left. So Correct. you seen those pictures of yes. like these entire areas of town that are basically like meadows now because they went through and bulldozed all those fucking homes and shit? Yeah, before they looked like they were fucking bombed out buildings. Yeah, it looked like yeah. Dresden after World War II, man. Absolutely. You know, but like there's this thing that happens after that a little bit. It's like, oh, okay, well, we still have all the city infrastructure here. We still have all the laws. We still have all the codes. We still have all the funding for the police department and stuff. But now there's less fucking people here. Guess what? Everything else works better. You know, and so it's it's really simple, man. You know, um, and then like you know, particularly like right now, it is it is mind boggling the lengths to of which people will argue that they can't make it ahead in this world <clears throat> in this market right now. It is fucking insane. There are people doing it right this minute. You, I, anybody can do it. All right, all you need is a goddamn pulse. There was a really cool article that came out in the in the in the journal the other day that I actually did the breakdown on like where the wage increases are. Mm, mm. Where do you think most of the wage increases are? Uh, in terms of a segment of the working population, where are they? And you can segment it any way you want. Do you mean it in terms of geography, or do you mean in terms of? Okay, so not in terms of geography. Take that off the table. Okay. Do you so, mean so you're talking about like specific sectors of the economy? You can do it that way. Uh, well, the first thing I would say is probably service. Um, yes, but for a very specific reason. What's that? The people who are getting all the gains are people who are changing jobs. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you're jumping ship in the same <laughs> industry right now, you're getting about a 20 to 25% bump. Okay. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, if you find yourself in a situation, oh, you can't find a job, right, or you got a shitty job, just change jobs. You'll be fine. You'll get a huge bump right now. It's crazy. Because they're sitting there and actually looking at, like, the sector-by-sector -sector breakdown. Well, where's all the increase and stuff? Well, we don't see that. You know, there's not, like, a specific standout sector. But if we actually take a look at people in their life and their working, like, life cycle through work, all right, the people who are making jumps are making all the gains. 
<laughs> right now. So regardless of which sector, and so of course with services being the largest one, that's where you're seeing most of the games. So it's weird, man. So well, there were like there was a follow up <clears throat> article on that. I was like, if this is a recession, <clears throat> it's the weirdest recession we've ever seen ever. <laughs> So, so, okay, so ultimately, I think you're right. I think that what's going to happen is it's going to meet the criteria for a recession, but it won't quite it will. feel like, right. it'll feel like a recession in a weird way, because you're right, that there's something stupid going on with that, where if you're making 20 to 25% more to change jobs, yeah, right, that means that the industry is still holding on to they're still holding on to an idea that needs to get fucked in a hurry. Is, it is getting fucked in a hurry. Well, there's this, this number, there's this, uh, look, businesses do this when they're trying to get customers and when they're trying to <clears throat> deal with employees where it's like, we want to spend more on acquisition than retention. Right, yeah. Right? And that's an old school mentality because there's this, this uh, concept of like company loyalty yeah. that frankly should have started dying around 1985 yeah i, I think I, I think that that titanic has hit its iceberg so yeah 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 i think it has huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay <laughs> yeah I, I think that one is done you know it probably hasn't sunk completely yet but um it was interesting there was another thing that i saw that was like tied to that so well it was like this this reddit meme thing or one of those like stories, whatever it is, where I, I don't think it was a Reddit, it was something on my Google news feed. But it was like this guy, he's like, All right, I'm thinking about changing jobs. Should I go tell my boss? And everybody was like, Yeah, go, you know, I mean, go give him a fair shake. All right. And so he says, Well, I think I'm going to change my job. All right. And the guy says, Oh, well, man, we can't afford to lose you and stuff like that. And, you know, this guy's like, Well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to jet. And he's like, well, I'll tell you what, let, you know, let's put it in for the approval process and stuff like that, see if we can get you a raise. And so, you know, a couple days later, boss comes back and he says, congratulations, we got you a 5% raise. And the guy's like, thanks, but this place is offering me 20% more. And he's like, oh, okay, well, you know, um, can you hold out for six months before we can do another review? Because <laughs> HR won't let us do one so that fast. And he's like, no, here's my two weeks. <laughs> and it's just like perfectly encapsulates kind of what's going on with the market right now, man. Um, I'm watching people play musical yeah. chairs at the bar like crazy. So, you know, I mean, they're getting the, the people who've got like two weeks of experience, they get poached off, you know, by another joint and they get a raise out of it. I didn't realize this, but the job that has the most turnover there is their hostesses. Okay. And they're also the ones who get paid the most. Okay. Per hour. They get like 17 bucks a fucking hour. It's nuts. Do you know why? Huh? Do you know why? Because they're hot. Is that what you're going to say, Jeff? <laughs> because they're not. <laughs> it's because they don't get tips. So. Well, there, there's that. And I, I'm not fooling with you. That is why they actually tend to put them at the I understand. No. Like, like, yeah. I, I, every bar manager, every restaurant manager I've ever heard, they all say that thing. But guess what, man? It doesn't fucking matter anymore because you can't retain them anyway. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. So... Um, I understand. <sighs> Pat, I'm going to go off on a weird tangent. Are you ready for this? One? Okay. Okay. And uh, this is this is personal to me because this is a... I should have this done already today as a job, but it is pissing me off so much that I am putting it off to the last minute because every five minutes it is getting on my fucking nerves. All right, so <laughs> what is this, this okay. nasty chore? <laughs> okay. We have to come to an agreement, okay? We have to agreement, come to an agreement when it comes to the gays. And I don't mean this... The gays? The gays. Okay. So I think I've made this... I think I've made my position on this clear in the past. I find the overt gayness in terms of that personality. I, I'm not I'm not trying to you know what I mean. It is the hand flipping, it is the 
Mm -hmm. The darling, the sweet, uh, oh, oh, my sweet summer. Okay, all right. I don't want to. Sure, like I, almost like queer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I hate it. I oh, don't, do you? I don't hate the oh. the. Um, obviously, I, I don't hate the lifestyle, but I hate that much like you hate vocal fry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of do. You do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I've seen like. The the hair on your neck is fine, but your beard actually <laughs> pops out like like you're ready to fight, right? Um, and for me, when I come across that, okay, so there's something about it I understand. This was explained to me a long time ago, mm -hmm. where how did this develop? How did this become a thing? Well, we need to come to an agreement because this, this came about because the flamboyancy came out because this was a way for gays to identify each other. Because if you mm -hmm. approach somebody who was straight in 1980, you could have gotten your ass kicked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So for me, it's like, all right, let's come to an agreement that if, if a regular just normal, like, hi, I'm Julius and I'm gay, right? That's fine. The attitude needs to be like, hey, I'm flattered, man, but I'm not, right? You cannot be like, ew! Oh, well, yeah, sure. But that's what I'm saying. Because I want to see this put to an end. I hate it What's so much. What's the flamboyancy? Much. Yes, and there's... Why does it get under your skin so much? Okay. Is it I'm... because people throw it in your face? Or is it just because of, like, some kind of element to it? Yes, and this well, is the one? element... This is, this, is the, this is the element to it that really got under my skin. Okay? I would play this for you, but I'd lose my job. But the... The thing that really gets to me is that within the flamboyancy, uh -huh. okay, there is a double standard that drives me fucking nuts. And within that, there's this thing where they keep talking about other people like they're delicious or this person is so, right? Uh -huh. Fucking, if Ben Affleck talked, like a, talked about a woman like that, they'd yeah. have his nuts. Probably. But because this is yeah. a person with that flamboyancy, <clears throat> totally fine. It's cute. It's kitschy. Yeah, okay. Bullshit. Okay. All right, I see your point. I cannot yeah. stand that, okay? That, that, is, that is just utterly absurd. Yeah. All right? It, it personally grinds my gears. And whatever we can do to just normalize gayness, right, where it's like, just be a person. Yeah. Stop being a fucking cartoon. Yeah. Right? Or feel like you have to because it's the only way to identify other people. Yeah. Right? That's got to go. Yeah. That's a question of tolerance, and it, it, it drives me nuts. Yeah. And how that ends up being okay is just like... Uh, well, I think you, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there with that being such a... I mean, you're talking about a real outlier in terms of the population back in the 1980s. All right? Um... And so it comes from that that queer, almost drag community. Yes. You know, that was very select, and it was very small, and it was very, very... I mean, it was just... It was counterculture. It was definitely counterculture. 100%. 100% yes. counterculture, and so they just throw it in your face. Now, like, all right, I've got good news for you on this. Please. I think that's dying. So I think that's dying. I think it's it's not where it was... Say like twenty years ago with birdcage kind of era stuff, okay. So where it was okay to be out and it was okay to be super flamboyant, okay. And then after that, it was like, all right, so let's start tacking on more pieces of the alphabet to this thing. And so you left people who are both lesbian and gay kind of out there on the vanguard, <clears throat> and now that they're kind of the normies in the group, right? Um, right. That 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 thing is not really happening anymore. I mean, you'll find it if you go on Twitch. But you're playing, you're dialing it up to 11 there anyway, man. No. So, you know, um, but like I get it on the double standard kind of thing too. Um, you could never do that. It just No, I get that. You could never do that. But I guess my question would be like, all right, fine. So they get to do it for now. All right. So, you know, that doesn't necessarily give me license to start acting like that. All right. Towards women. And so, you know, let's just. Let's give them time to actually come back into the box. And I think, like, most... Like, so out of all the people, the, the alphabet people, 
<laughs> in the world that I've known. Go ahead. I've known more gays than any, all the other Absolutely, categories. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. So um, I have, like, out of all of the gay people that I know, I would say there was one who was a royal asshole. Um, couldn't stand his guts. And then there was one who was very much so that way. And he was just kind of a standout dude. All right, so that we just like completely, yeah, I called everybody precious and stuff like that. You know, um, I don't think he talked about delicious or anything like that, but that's the part that really gets under my skin. See, it's, yeah, I, I don't know that many of them in my experience have done that. And so now you transcribing TV shows, yeah, you probably run into a few more yeah. than I have. Yeah, vastly overrepresented. Well, of course it okay. is. But yeah, it's just like the Goyim. We talked about that yeah. last week. Yeah. Let me. Okay, so this is not a visual medium, but you're gonna see me like, like, like crumpling my knuckles here. Is it's it's like nails on a chalkboard with things like this because I I find it so difficult to be in a position where goddamn Gillette is making commercials saying like end the locker room mentality. Right, uh -huh. men and the locker room mentality. Unless you like other men, <laughs> yeah, that's like, kind of true. Fuck yeah. you. It's just I, I can't. I, these are the same people this, on the same side saying like, you guys need to knock this out because it's menacing to women. It's degrading, but yeah. All right, uh, you, you, uh, okay, so. You've been a good man over the years about saying, uh, Jeffrey, you just have to understand that hypocrisy exists. Yeah, yeah. Right? And and you just... I, I'm getting the idea that you're not going to do that. <laughs> my, body, my body wants to reject it like a pig heart, but right. eventually I have to let it pump it's blood. It's metastasized. Right? It's just like, I, I got to live. I got to yeah. let it pump blood. Right? And there's just this part of me is like... Because you're, you you like guys, cool. Or, you yeah. know, even if your interests are, like, musical theater, don't care. Yeah. I can be into that, too. It's still like chicks. That's the thing, is it's this kind of thing that actually creates an artificial divide. And it's like, okay, I'm finding it hard to identify mm -hmm. with you yeah. because you're distinguishing yourself from me on purpose. Yeah. Right? To 11. Yeah. Where it's just kind of like, yeah, you can also like guys... But, dude, this Aaron Rodgers is throwing a football. It's cool, yeah, right? Yeah, that's cool. That's that's all I'm saying. And and don't. There should be no version of this where anybody who's doing this, like even if it's a woman, even if it's a woman, just like that is a delicious hunk of man meat. Like the answer should still be like, knock it the fuck off. Yeah, that's you know, so that's like somebody's son, you know, just like you say, that's somebody's daughter or their mother. Right. Oh yeah, no, that changed after I had a little girl for sure. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was I get like much more protective about that. Um, there should be no version of like, oh god, well, but they're gay, so this is cute. No. So my question is it. like, all right, so there should be no version of this. So why is there? And so like, rather than getting mad when I see something like that, and I got somebody who's like a full thirteen on the scale of you know gayness out there, like my question is like, man, why do you like that? So it's not like, well, why the fuck do you get away with that? It's like, man, why you got to be like that far out on here? What's going on with you, brother? You know? And so it's totally different reaction. And, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, yeah, that, that's where I'm okay with the hypocrisy. It's just out of curiosity. So it's not necessarily out of moral justification. So, but I'm not a very moral person. So <laughs> you are, you are, you are in your own way. Like, but let me say it this way. You, you are. But you're, you're absolutely not imposing with your moral code. Mm -mm. Right? I, I rarely see you interject and say, um, this is the way things should be done. However, you do live your life according to a series of principles that you tend not to break. Yes. So... I don't need to wear them like fucking ribbons, though. So, no, yeah. No, I, I understand. And... and you know, and so like issues like this, yeah, there are things that I see that make my blood boil a little bit, but you know, there's also this point in time where like I don't know, man. With with that issue in particular, the trans issue right now, which I've been doing a lot of reading on lately. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've done more. I mean, I'm slowly coming a little bit more to your side on this one. What are your uh, thoughts? Huh? What are your thoughts? Oh, I don't know. I, I, need, I need to do a little bit more reading on it. So, um, there, there are elements of it that I find deeply disturbing. But it's mm. almost like, all right, so this is really dangerous, but it's like ants being really dangerous. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, they could be dangerous. <laughs> so, but right now they're not that dangerous, you know. And the question is, are you going to stand here long enough for them to get dangerous? I don't know. And so, yeah, it, like, and I, I'm thinking, like, so the way that I got hooked on that one was, like, mm. I saw these interesting, I've been reading a lot of, like, British commentary lately. So. From where? Oh, podcasts and books and stuff. Okay. All right. And so, like, apparently, like, this is a way bigger deal in Britain, all right, than it is here in the United States. And the element about it that makes it interesting here in Britain versus the United States is they see it as basically a cultural export from the United States. And so it's got this double threat to it, okay? So, which is kind of interesting, all right? Well, okay, there's another part to that that you are forgetting. Well, I don't know. I might know it. I'm just not saying it. Okay, so the, the other part with that is... Because their healthcare system is different. Right, right. Um, what their healthcare system chooses to basically treat or support is also sort of an endorsement. It is. Because yeah, yeah. it is a national system. Yeah, yeah. And so apparently, and this was just the podcast that I saw yesterday uh, with this one lady who I'm reading her book right now. Um, she, uh, she says that NHS is about to get much, much more restrictive on this to the point in time where it will not be, you will not be able to get um, a full change. Transition. Transition, thank you. Basically, so you're right talking way. about gender reassignment. Yes, gender reassignment. That's the one that I was looking for yeah. until you're 18. So, yeah. Uh, but everybody's like, there's people who are scurrying this by going to like fucking Morocco and getting it done. And so and stuff. And so it's like, all right, well, I guess if you've got the money to go chop your own dick off, fine. You know, whatever. But, um, you know, there's this other piece of it where, like, they really do, at least some of the British conservatives that I've read, you know, they really do see this as a fucking truly dangerous American export. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, that's, that's not where I was going with that. Um, no, but it's okay. You can go there. Well, I don't really have that many more thoughts on it. No, so, no. This is this is how it comes full circle. Is um, you unleash the Beatles on us and changed our culture forever. And... <laughs> you get that reassignment surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Take that motherfucker. <laughs> no, 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 no. Everything was fine. So you fuckers did that. No, it's yeah. it's uh, um... killed Elvis, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, there's there's like there's there's more of it that I need to learn. So there's some of it that so because like I did start noticing like once I started paying attention, yeah, all right, that okay, so there is this like Twitch is the worst, all right. They do a really good job of actually like highlighting all that shit. They sure do. Yeah, no, I was kind of surprised once I actually started looking at it. Um and then, like, YouTube, not so much, all right? So YouTube has its own thing, but, I mean, like, your algorithm is a little bit more deterministic in YouTube. Yeah. And so you have to go kind of seek that stuff out before it infiltrates your feed. Uh, apparently, TikTok is fucking horrifying, so, on this one. It's and, not for us, bro. No, that motherfucker needs to be... They need to pull the pin on that bitch. And so, you know, it is... Every time I dive into that one a little bit more, it gets a little bit more scary, and it... Uh, Quite honestly, it's like so over the top on so many things that it's going to tie its own rope, um, you know, one way or another. Um, Pedro, what's the pro okay? What's the problem with TikTok? What's what's the what, generally speaking? What does TikTok encourage by having such shorts? What does that encourage people to do? Oh like like just absolute content addiction so you know it's crazy how long people spend on tiktok and then report oh i've only been on it for 10 minutes actually you've been on it for three fucking hours dude oh okay okay yeah. you, you're absolutely right there okay but what is the length of what you watch on tiktok it's a minute okay here's the problem mm -hmm. does one minute 
allow for the opportunity for any kind of nuance. Oh, or, no, absolutely not. It's just like Twitter, man. Or do you so, basically play up yeah. to a caricature level? No, you dial it up to a 12. Yeah, right. On that right. Thing. Yeah. No, and there's this really funny military 14, guy. Then there's got to be 16. Yeah, yeah. Right? No, no, no. No, and I mean, there's so there is this funny guy that I've been following, not on TikTok, but he posts on both YouTube shorts and TikToks. He does a great fucking job of that, man. I mean, the stuff he puts up is like completely innocuous and it's just picking on dudes in the military, which is hilarious. Okay, but like that's the medium and that's how you do these things, you know? Right. And so like now if you look at like some of the political commentary that you see on YouTube shorts, it is it is so bad. Um it's ubiquitous and it's also like it, it what's the right metaphor for this? Um what's that what's that uh that logical fallacy where you double down on something. What is that called? Um, sunk cost fallacy. So, oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. And so that thing will lead you down a rabbit hole that you cannot climb out of because it will infest your feed. It'll absolutely fucking infest it. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, um, I've noticed that just with the little bit that I've been doing with YouTube Shorts, and all of a sudden it's like all of that, and I'm like, "Holy fuck, man! I better stop this." And so, yeah. oh, you you go into the history and start X. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So no, you just, just got to delete go. the whole motherfucker. Just, just so yeah, you got to go. Yeah, you're right, and, and that's that's part of the problem is. And then you get the clean feed that goes back to cat videos. <laughs> Which is where we should all start. I mean, all start. I, I mean, that's the thing is, is everybody needs to refresh the cats every now and then. I think that's. The cats. I think. I think that's that's. Yeah, now look, that's. I know for me that's dogs. Okay. Well, sure, but it, it'll figure that out within about five minutes. It will, and, and more specifically, the the kind of dog videos I like. Do you know which ones I like the best? I don't know. No. Is when big dogs are friends with little cats. Oh yeah, those are pretty good. Yeah. Like, I found that when like there's a little cat in that big dog's bed. You're talking about yeah. that big dog Bailey. I think that's the one you're talking about. Oh, I don't yeah. know. I've seen it. And the dog of kind of like tries to move it out of the bed. Oh no, this one he said he went. The, this humongous dog went and goes sits down in the cat's bed, which is about the size of a dinner plate. <laughs> okay, so I saw the really other cute, one man. where <laughs> this tiny little cat took the big dog's bed, uh -huh. and the dog. Like, tries to move the bed to get the cat to move. Yeah. Won't do it. Won't do it. Then it starts, like, lifting up, the, like, trying to shake it out. Won't do it. Nope. Eventually what it does is it just forms this G-shaped <laughs> cushion around, around the cat, cat. Which yeah. is what the cat really wanted from right, the yeah. beginning. Fucking smart, man. And, yeah, yeah so... <laughs> like, when it comes down to it, I'm the same guy who'll sit there and watch, like... um Whoa, those dudes got crushed by an elevator, right? But the the, <laughs> the, the the part of me that is when you get down to what my true joys in life are, like these animals are so cute. Oh, they're so cute. So, I love this. My favorite cat videos are cats fitting in weird places. So like sinks, <laughs> shoe boxes. Uh, fucking there's this one that's great where the cat actually climbs up into like this overhead light that's bowl shaped. <laughs> So you can see all the kitty beans. You know what kitty beans are? What's so kitty bean? those are those little pads on our paws. Oh, so I can, oh okay, they're called okay. kitty beans. Oh. So, <laughs> I love that shit, man. And so yeah, once they start like getting way too much shit on like election fraud and stuff, it's like, oh fuck, <laughs> yeah. we need to reset the cat. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's completely true. It's the same thing. I, I like come back to it. It's like, <laughs> oh shit, these owners want this husky to come inside. He don't want to come inside, yeah. right? They keep calling his name. He's like, no, no. I'm like, this is great. Yeah. I think I've seen that one. <laughs> it's funny. This yeah. it's just uh it's like I will look up stubborn dogs. Oh yeah. Because it's so funny. Yeah. And eventually you'll see a dude who's walking his dog, but it's not walking. He's just yeah. dragging it through the park because it's like, I don't leave the park. Yeah. This is funny. Or if I'm really in a bad mood, the best way to bring life back to me is if you haven't seen it. There are ghosts that scream like humans. Yeah. And it will make me double over in laughter oh, yeah. every single time. Yeah. 
What do you want? <laughs> oh, it's not even. It's oh, not yeah, even. yeah. It's, it's the ones that actually sound like the screaming <laughs> oh, like yeah, human beings. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. it's just the funniest <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, nah, every now and then you got to reset to that. But speaking of stress relief, all right, you got me hooked on to the best form of stress relief. Oh, what are you playing that game? I am playing the fuck out of that game. So, did you beat that game yet? I'm really close. I am not even remotely close. So, I have gotten so bad at first-person shooters that but, I've had to start this over like three fucking times. Okay? <laughs> Just to realize, it was like, well, I skipped that screen where it taught me, you, you were teaching me how to use this little flamethrower thing. Because yeah. I was like, that's dumb. <laughs> and now it's like, oh, no, actually, that thing's really handy. You know? And then there's other things where it's like... Man, I don't want to spend my mod points on this. And it's like, no, you better spend your mod points on all the things because you're going to need all the things. So Doom Eternal has consumed so much of my time. Okay, It's got me pretty good, too. It's got its hooks into me so good. It runs so smooth on my machine. Isn't that great? Do you just find yourself like looking at it? Yeah, it's like, yeah, this is really disgusting. You know, where you're going through all the guts and shit. And then there's other ones where you're in like the, the Citadel and it's like, this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In, in, in its in its horrifying glory. Like I gotta say this. I have no idea what the fuck's going on. I don't care. Mm. And what's great about this is neither does the main character. And I love that. No, he's just like whatever. The <laughs> the lore's there for you if you want it. But if you're actually playing as the avatar of the game, he doesn't care either. No. He just does as he's told. Yep. And <laughs> what's amazing about this is there's something about this design that I kept fighting, like my instincts. Let me say this. What do you mean go, design? We'll, we'll close this on, on this. But all right, there is an old school mentality that comes from gaming in the eighties. Okay, mm-hmm. and what that is is you're playing this game, and in this game you are presented with two grenades. Uh huh. And you have these grenades, and you want to blow up regular enemies with them, but you can't. You have to nurse these grenades because you're going to need them on the boss. Yes. So there is still this hoarder's mentality of, like, power weapons. Never use these. Right. This game is about... These weapons all have purpose. Yes. And if you keep trying to pound in nails with this screwdriver... (laughs) <laughs> because you're an 80s gamer. Yes. It's not going to work. Yes. Right? And so there's this thing where you're like, okay, the game is about speed, movement, and juggling in a stressful situation. Yes. But making you feel great about doing it. Yes. So you were just like, you're waiting for the meter to fill. Okay, go in here. All right, glory kill this guy. Next dude. I can't glory kill you because I'm going to start you on fire first because I need, I need armor. armor. Okay. I'm going to chainsaw but this dude. Chainsaw this guy because I won't have ammo. I need the ammo. Okay. And the intentional design on this, because the first time when I when I started getting jammed up on ammo, I was cussing. I was like... I, was, I couldn't believe that you could only have 16 <laughs> fucking shell. Like, this is like half a fucking box, man. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck kind of stupid game is this? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> the same thing with the armor shards. I was like, five armor? What the fuck, man? What it's not even fuck? worth picking up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. And then I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm, but also, it's because I'm, I'm sitting there like, I have to use these shells. I look in the inventory. I'm like, well, I have 250 plasma rifle rounds, but I got to save this. No, I don't have to no, save you're not this. Save it. When, I ch- when I go out there and chainsaw somebody... Ammo for everything comes yeah, out. Everything. Yeah. It's like, wow. As soon as I figured that out, I was like, what are all these little popsicles, you know? And I was like, oh, that's ammo. Oh, that's a shitload of ammo. Okay, yum, num, 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 num. <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. it's at that moment where, where something, you, you just, you, you have these gears and somebody had this like big chuck in there. Right. And then somebody like eventually kicks that loose. Yeah. And then the gears start turning. You're like, Oh, I get this game. Yeah, I'm a killing machine now. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Because it's it's like I said, you are a glass cannon in that game. You, you do yes. So there is no hiding around corners and you know taking pot shots at guys. 
You can do that a little bit. You can do it exactly like three fucking times, and then you got a jet. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, and it's just one of those games that it took me forever. The first time I was going through it, playing the first level, I'm like, oh, man, I'm a killing machine. And the second level, it's like, fuck, man. <laughs> Why am I losing? Why am I so bad at this? <laughs> I know. And I got all the way through, I think it was like the frost level to the end, and there was this, like, there's this boss fight there. And I was just like... I can't fuck it can't be done <laughs> this, this cannot be done yeah this is not happening man so i'm like i must have missed something somewhere you know like a weapon or like something what is the mechanic i'm missing yeah exactly yeah. and yeah. then so i was like fuck it okay start over i must have missed something and then i started slowly getting it i was like oh wait i need to do multiple different kinds of attacks got it Okay, so I was like, why am I running out of ammo so much? I was like, because you're not using gas, bro. So, you know, I was like, just chop one of these little dudes. He barfs out as much ammo as that big fucker over there. You yes, know? He does. <laughs> yeah, so, and then it was like, and so I played it through, got to the same spot. Still couldn't fucking beat it. And the reason why I couldn't beat it was because it wasn't getting all the weapon mods. So... You had points. And you, I had, you were just sitting on points. Fuck the points. <laughs> I didn't even realize, man. So and then I, like like as soon as I like got the, the chain gun on the shotgun, I was like, oh fuck, man, these guys are way easier now. Oh yeah. Okay, well it's funny because like on the flip side, I fucking sticky bomb people like crazy. I do too, man, but like all you have to do is tap that up button and it switches it right over. And so, like that, the, like the guys that were killing my, they were every time I saw one, I was like, run away, you know, it was the fucking Hell Knights because they jump all over the place. But as soon as I got that mod on there, it was like, <laughs> it was like, oh, fuck, that was easy. <laughs> it's, yeah, same thing with the little spiders, man. They were kicking my ass. So you shoot off the thing, they get right in your grill and they fucking, you know, crab claw you and you're dead. But not if you got that shotgun, man. <laughs> well, and there are, that's the thing is there's multiple ways to deal with that and this is what's funny is those mods it, you have like seven weapons but it ends up giving yeah. you like 21 weapons oh yeah based on how you play that which is utterly genius but yeah. the other thing yeah because the problem i was having was yeah for a second i was getting my ass kicked like i don't understand i should get doom i i, I was <laughs> yeah. like, i was there yeah i was like i was there at the beginning yeah. um and i'm sitting there like getting pissed off like how am I losing at this when fucking, like, girls with avatars that are cartoon dogs yeah. are, are whooping ass at this game? Yeah. I'm like, how is this possible? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, they understand the game. Yeah. I came in here with preconceived notions right. and expected this to be kind of like an updated version of yeah. the bullshit that I, I knew. New weapons. New weapons, and uh, of course, I'm like, your levels. <laughs> well, it's Doom, which means I'm going to spend two and a half hours running around this uh, fucking riddle of the Minotaur maze, right? Where it's like, yeah, well, okay, I can see the yellow key, right? But it's on a step that's just slightly bigger than a regular step, so I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have jump. to. Yeah, it's like I'm gonna have to run around the entire map and then be on that one step yeah. and, then and, I, and fight off legions of enemies, you know. And so we must conserve all ammo. Must yes, must yeah. must. No, must you know know where your 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 retreat your your bolt holes are. Yes, yes. And now it's like no, you're not gonna do any of that anymore, man. In fact, if you run away, you're guaranteed to fucking die. So, <laughs> I, I will. Okay. Yeah. So, I will say this game has drawn a certain quote out of me. I, I, I say this in all shooters, but this one has gotten me a lot. Mm -hmm. Is it is that 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 Mike from Saving Private Ryan thing where I just keep saying, who's doing the shooting? Right? right. <laughs> because you know, I'm like, what is fucking me up? Right. And it's because I'm sitting there wrestling with this uh, two-horned gigantic like jumping thing, but there's this little guy like scratching at me with his little claws <laughs> behind me. Ow, ow, and that's ow, still ow, fucking ow. me up. Oh, yeah. 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 No, like everything hurts in the game. Yeah. So, oh man, it, yeah, no, who's doing the shooting? But that's that's, <laughs> it's like it's this guy all the time, yeah. man, all the time. 
And he's just like, uh, oh, it's it's just, I'm getting nailed by this spider. Yeah. I'm getting... <sighs> like, I never got fucked up by the mancubuses before. <laughs> oh, they're so mean in this game, man. They're vicious. The caco demons are... Oh. Uh, when they bite you, it's like 45 health. Oh, you're fucking dead. Yeah. So, oh, see, those guys are kind of fun. They're so great. Yeah, so they definitely have the best sound effects on them, too. So, Dude, the sound in this yeah. game is exemplary. Yeah. The revenants aren't as tough, so... They don't seem like it, but <clears throat> again, there's something cool about, I just blew your rockets off. Yeah, fuck you. Come, come over, on over here and fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can come to me or I'll get to you eventually. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> you stay there. Yeah. I'm going to take off my glasses and put my rock walk over here. Yeah, exactly. All right. Check in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be here all night talking yeah, about this. Yeah. All right, but yeah. Um, well, I'll have more to report on Friday. So I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm Pat. I'm Jeffrey. I'm hitting the button. Okay. <laughs>